Sports. Okay. That's a fun label. It looks what like it's motor this? oil. <laughs> it does. It does look like motor oil. It looks like it's, and it's a, it's a liter bottle too. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Wine for the People Blind Wine Tastings. This week, as always, we've got another six wines up for tasting, up for ratings, up for selection. Uh, big thank you as always to Sometimes Always. They hook us up with these wines each week. If you want a discount on any of the wines that we're drinking on the show, you've got to get in pretty quick because we do tend to taste some smaller batch stuff. But there's a link in our description to these videos to our Discord channel. If you hop in there, there's a discount code area and you'll be able to get 10% off any of these wines when you buy them through Sometimes Always. Uh, another thing, guys. Uh, uh, you know what, I'm not embarrassed to say this. Noah always gets a bit anti, like, oh, I don't like asking people to subscribe. Fuck it. I want you to subscribe because, again, I'm living my dream of being paid to drink wine and talk shit, and that's only going to continue if you guys continue to support the channel. And the best way to do that is liking and subscribing. Apparently, if we mention it in the start and keep saying like and subscribe, uh, there's a big uptick in how many of you actually do it, which I really appreciate. So, again, I'm going to say it one more time and probably a bunch more times throughout the video when we're doing the collab, but please like and subscribe. Comment down below if there's I don't know if you're having a good week or anything like that because the engagement is what really drives us through the algorithm. But yeah, six more wines to taste. Like and subscribe for more content like this and let's get straight into it. Alrighty, I'm going to do this one a little bit differently this week because uh, I'm currently studying the Wissett Level 4 Diploma. With the Diploma, there is a rubric to assess quality wine. I'm going to chuck all of these wines through that rubric to show you guys what kind of the industry does to deem what a quality wine is. And also helps me train. I gotta study. This will be a really good test for me because I had COVID. Now I lost all, lost all sense of taste. Straight off the bat, we have a, a light colored red wine. Honestly, looks like Pinot. Like imagine that you painted your entire house burgundy and then people came over and you were like, guess what? My walls are actually scratch and sniff and they scratch that. That smells like burgundy to me. Not the region, the color. So that's what you're coming for uh, to this wine channel for is definitely color analysis rather than region. <laughs> So it's a, what we call a medium minus body. It's got medium minus tannins, probably a medium level of acidity. I'd say medium fruit intensity. And I'd say probably about a medium. This is immensely drinkable. You could easily smash the shit out of this. Um, you can have a lot of fun with that. It smells old worldy. It just smells like there's been a lot of care and attention. A decent amount of elevage has gone into it. Um, but this sort of really quite vibrant acidity that's not over the top, it's sort of like, it's one of those things that when you have all those little things that are perfectly imbalanced, everything kind of looks a little bit meh. You know, it looks a little bit boring. There's a little bit of tannin to it. Like it's got this sort of like nice little grippiness like in my mouth right now. It does sort of feel like I've got, yeah, just like the texture of uh, a little bit of fine sand or something. Like, you know, when you've got like dry sand on your feet and you're walking on slightly wet sand and there's that grip between the two surfaces. Again, the tasting notes here, bright cherries. Maybe actually medium plus finish is actually lasting a little bit longer and you're getting a bit more of that savory character, that dried fruit. Uh, a lot of red cherry, a lot of raspberry, kind of a little bit of black currant as well. There is a little bit of this kind of nice pencil shaving-y thing. And I would buy 12. I would drink the crap out of this. This is a really, really, really tasty wine. Really, really well made. Um, that would just take a load of boxes on any night of the week. Hopefully it's got like a, a bit of a daily price tag uh, attached to it. So, so here we go. Wine number two, um, another red number. Uh, when we start look, when you're looking at these wines and people are like, oh, this looks like a big red wine. This does not look like a big red wine. This looks like cordial. Medium ruby again, maybe even pale ruby. I reckon it's pale ruby, even though there's a bit of haze there. I'll comment on the haze. That'll be an extra point if I comment on haze. Gorgeous red fruit. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, these, it's a literally like eating an actual raspberry, but not the confected raspberry. The actual like raspberry itself off the tree, you're smelling the, you've got a bunch of other things going on that actually kind of frame it and give it definition. Ooh, yeah. Okay, um, I'm thinking it's a Pinot because it's got this sort of like sweet and sour little acidity thing that is something that I've come to associate with Pinot Noir. I'm gonna go medium for acid, medium minus for tannins. Uh, Pinot Noir from a producer who knows exactly what they're doing and is aiming for that super high level of stuff and they're probably getting close to it. Give them more money, give them more time and they'll be right up there. I really like that. It's really intense, it's got good length, it's really um, pronounced on the nose or medium plus so it is quite, it's got plenty of flavour to showcase it along. It's not very complex but it's got length, it's got, com it's got intensity and it's very well balanced so I'd call it very good. Um, all right, moving on to something slightly darker uh, in hue, but not necessarily in intensity. Oh, wow. Yeah, definitely intensity in nose. That doesn't make any fucking sense because it doesn't smell big. It smells very similar to the last couple. It's probably still medium body, medium weight, but just a little bit more color to it. The boys will have said something interesting there. Um, 
medium minus for tannins. I'd say medium plus for intensity, it's medium alcohol. Probably medium acid. Directed sort of line of mineral, sort of crackling acidity uh, really livens this thing up. Um, although it does have a nice welcome savory edge. Gamay without the structure without the tannin uh, is, is, is where this is. And it could well be just like a gamay. What is there to say other than yum? That's great. Uh, fuck, we're on fire this week. It's a bit less, it sort of feels like it's in the middle of those two wines. It doesn't have quite the like confected thing that was going on in wine number two. It's not quite as tannic as wine number one, but it does have little elements of both of those things. I'm thinking that that is a really cool hands off. I reckon it's sulfur free and it's some field blend, but it's it's so closely there. Um, I think it's a fantastic style of Pinot Noir, done really well. It's complex, it's balanced, it's it's really really delicious. It's very very well put together. First white wine of the week, lean clean fighting machine. That's awesome. Uh, what do they call it? It's like a fancy word for bubbles. They use it all the time. Frizzante! That's the word! Circle gets the square. So there's a bit of frizzante going on in this one. But the bubbles have instantly dissipated as soon as you sort of like move it around the glass a little bit. Just let them come to the surface and there's no more to come. Medium minus intensity, medium minus finish. It's a dry wine. Uh, it's got medium body. It's a little bit of tannin there. Very, very beautiful wine. I would buy the shit out of this. There's definitely 12 bottles in this in my lifetime. As to a variety, actually, uh, it reminds me of Fiano, to be honest. It reminds me of a... Um, a white variety that has texture, elevated acidity, very pretty. Great fruit juice combined with a little bit of acid, which again, isn't the most, uh, it's not earth shattering to find out that something that could potentially be a Riesling has a little bit of sweetness and then a little bit of acid. But then on the back end, it does have this little bit of reminder that's like, no, 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 serious winemaking. We've got some, uh, we've got some stale cardboard on the back end. It's got zero mid palate, like nothing in the middle. It's all just edges. Someone's like just wet the sides of the swimming pool, but you can't go swimming, bit shit. All right, uh, next white we've got something, uh, it's got a slight, I mean, we're splitting hairs at the moment, but um, there's a slight honeyed character uh, to the character, to say honeyed hue to the color. But yeah, not heaps on the nose, like it doesn't overpower you by any means. So when I'm saying it's uh, sessionable, it's just like no one's gonna question it when you give them a glass, they're gonna smell it and go like, ah. Honeyed and luscious and brilliant again this sort of wishy-washy thing it's really fun we saw this on the first wine but this is the white iteration of that love the incorporation of this this great sort of texture being built up medium minus body medium intensity medium finish yeah still that kind of crunchy apple refreshment a little bit of citrus there a little bit of grapefruit that marzipan still there uh 30 a bottle i reckon that's gonna be the cheapest one that we've tried so far Throw nine my way. I like it more than wine number four. It's more my style. And yeah, wait for summertime. That's gonna go down an absolute treat. Super easy drinking, lovely little refreshing wine. And last wine of the week. We have gone again up in, in, in color as well. We're going more honeyed. This is fun. Cool color to it. So it looks kind of like, uh, it, it, it looks like what I would want honeydew juice to look like, but honeydew is a trash fruit that like has a way better name than it does flavor. If honeydew looked like this, more people would be eating that shit. Watermelon would be in trouble. Like big watermelon would be calling their brokers being like, guys, we've got to figure out this honeydew situation. But thankfully it tastes like ass for the watermelon guys. That acidity is really nice and refreshing for that really great flavor. And then now I'm starting to see a lot more like apples and pears and, stuff like that. So there is a wide variety of primary fruit here um, that really indicates that it's probably a very, very good wine. Oh, it's botrytis, but it's, it's botrytized. That's why it's got this apricot-y thing. Yep, okay, orange wine. Um, orange wine's always a really interesting one. People get put off it because they tried the wrong one first. This would be a great orange wine to start out with though, because it gives you a little inkling of what the whole sort of uh, varietal, well, not varietal, the style of wine making's about. Um, the only thing holding it back from being outstanding is it just needs a little bit more intensity and a little bit more complexity. But it gives this element of unctuousness to the palate, even in a dry wine, and it lifts the aromas. It's gorgeous. All right, well, let's see if, uh, oh, it was five, five dozens here. Five dozens and a half dozen. See how, we'll see how the guys go, but uh, hopefully they agree with me. We're back. Yes. We're good? Yes. Ready? Yeah. Here we are. Sweet. Um, another six wines. Yeah. Uh, I was really into these. Mm -hmm. I was super about, especially the reds. Like these first three, don't want to spoil the game, but I had 12, 12, 12 for the first three wines here. I bought five dozen. See, yeah, this nice. Is, this, <laughs> this is really fun because I did this in the Wisset style tasting and I had yeah. good, very, very, so good, very, good, very, good, 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 very good. Cool. Uh, starting out with wine number one, I was mm -hmm. very unambiguous in my critique of this. 2019 mm -hmm. Grenache, it's $40 and I'll have 12 of them. 40, like 35 or less. 
dollars, and I was like twelve in an instant. I would drink that every night of the week, not even thinking about it. How much was it like? Fifty eight. Yeah, sounds like Alpine Neb. Alpine Ooh. Neb again. Yeah, sure. Surely, surely. Sometimes, always is, is love. Oh, what is this? <laughs> okay, that's a fun label. It looks what like a motor oil. <laughs> it does. It does look like motor oil. It looks like something. It's, and it's, a, it's a liter bottle too. It's 2019. Is it a liter? It's Norello. It's Norello not... Mascalese. So wow. Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't even know that Norello came in liter bottles. It does now. That's awesome. Dieci, Dieci, Decilitri. Dieci. Yeah, yeah. Basically a liter. 100, 100 centiliters. Honestly, that's sick ass. That's what, amazing. What variety did we say it was? Uh, Norello Mascalese. Norello Mascalese. Yeah, not so, one that I'm going to uh, guess. It is the, the, the <laughs> no, great variety that's yeah. famed from Mount Etna. Uh, and quite often is actually known to be the sort of like, it's the nebula of the south. Uh, this is also a, a Giorgio Di Maria import. So, fun wines import. So, hardcore natty. Uh, and that's looking pretty sweety. So, yeah. super, super good. The fact that it comes in litre bottles. Yeah, that, uh, that's a selling point. Perfect. Yeah. Just when 750 is not enough, there's an extra 350 for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got someone else around for the night. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, you're thirsty. Yeah. Um, well, wine. It was a really rough day. Well, that's a good one to have a dozen of, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, wine numero two. Cool. Uh, Loved it. Peter, yeah, maybe. But, yeah, I was like, Gamay. I'm, I'm, Noah's, Noah picks up on something. I've always struggled to, to really pick Gamay blindly. I always tend to look for tan, and this doesn't have a lot of it. No. But it has that raspberry thing. Yeah. And it's that Strawberry, raspberry compote thing. Yeah. I cool. love it. I freaking love it. Uh, how much was it costing us, Locke? 30. Yeah, Still. wow, that's an awesome, that is an awesome They must be local then, surely. Pino, 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 Pino. Awesome. What is that? Oh, that's Yokel. That's Grenache from Swan Valley. Fucking Grenache, man. I can't get that shit right to and save Swan myself. And Swan Valley as well. Like, yeah. Swan Valley is is one of those ones that's just coming up and up and up and up. So this um, is really cool. This is uh, Yokel, which is a side project of Dormalona. So Joe what? Perry and Dormalona. So this is her um, uh, side project from Swan Valley Fruit. She's mostly based in Margaret River. Uh, so basically, there's the turtle on the front. There is the Western Swamp Tortoise, which is, is endangered sick. in uh, the Swamp Valley, which is where it's native to. So a portion of the proceeds of the wine goes to protecting uh, the Western Swamp Tortoise of the Swan Valley. The Western Swamp Tortoise, pull one out. Uh, also, the wine is fucking tasty. The wine that is, is very class. tasty. That is all class. That's a sick little label too. One of the better value ones, and just the, the party juice. Like it's, it's, it is simple, but it's so pretty and delicious and flavorful and fun. And no one can literally hate that wine. I, I challenge you to find someone who will hate that wine. Yeah, it'd be wine. difficult to not enjoy is, that. Is it made in decent quantities? Because no, no, <laughs> damn it. Uh, wine number Love three. It. Wine number three. Uh, another lovely sort of medium body, juicy red wine thing. I was thinking it was probably a field blend because I was so confident on Grenache and Pinot there that I was like, oh, I'm not guessing that again. Um, uh, this has got some serious pedigree. Yeah, there. I mean, this has some yeah. quality, quality Pinot. Well, yeah. I've gone the wrong way with this tasting, haven't I? Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I didn't go. I didn't go sort of to Burgundy with it. No, uh, I actually went to Jura straight up. I had forty-five bucks as a wishful thinking. You went higher. You think I didn't price it. Yeah. Um, but I thought this was epic Adelaide Hills gear. I, this, I reckon this would be about 60 bucks. Yeah, I was really into it. You guys zig type zagged. I just was just like, oh yeah, some field blend that they've thrown everything in. So it's probably dirt cheap. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, this is definitely for that like special occasion. This is date night. This is, you know, anniversary. This is trying to impress someone kind of shit. It is delicious. But if, well, if you just want to treat yourself. Yeah, yeah just, right. <laughs> It's like, fuck it, I deserve it. Yeah, you um, don't have to have a partner to have a nice bottle of wine. Treat yourself, single people. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, the I, homies. I had $35. 45 and 12, 60, uh, I would buy 12. That's yeah, so it's another think. clean sweep, it's a great wine. Yeah. Uh, Locke, how much? Hey! It's that magic number though. It is the magic number. Field blend, baby, let's strike it out. What do we got? Oh, dude, it's Morak. Oh, dude, yeah, this is Kaipo Pino. Well Kaipo Pino. Yeah, That's sick. well done. Fucking hell, man. Dude, just, he just keeps fucking doing dude, it, doesn't yeah, he? Man. Morak, he just keeps man. doing it. And it's and it's get like a lot of these winemakers they're getting better and better and better as like time goes on. Um, like we saw the same sort of thing track with uh, Gareth Belton mm. when he first started out. We were like, wow, these are really good. And then every year they were like, wow, these are not just really good, but they're like really, 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 really good. Um, Morax just going on this trajectory at the yeah. moment. Even but the annoying thing is first release was really good too. So yeah, it's just kind of it started at a really good base and now it just keeps going up. And dude, that's underpriced. 
like under charge is more under for it. Oh, like it is fantastic, and I'm I, like I love that it's thirty eight bucks with someone to buy some. Magic. That's number. sixty bucks, man. That is a sixty dollar painter. That is yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, tasty fantastic. gear. Yeah. Wine number four. Moving over to the white side of things now. I was uh, looking at the wines, so I'm just like, ah, oh, great start, and then I'm gonna have a weird finish. But no, these all stood up really nicely. Uh, I only wanted six bottles of it because we're coming off the again dizzying heights of medium bodied uh, red wines, which is really my caveat. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's changed a little bit. Uh, I was the first person to taste it today, and now that sort of tastes like the sort of thing that you would like. Um, if you ever played violin, you use like resin on the bottle. Yeah, yeah it kind of tastes like that a little bit. I used to play violin. Why are you eating so much resin? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I played that. Uh, how much was it? Lock? 46. A little yeah. bit more, a little bit more than you'd want. Oh, to there pay must for be it. some context as, as to, to what we've got here. What are we, what are we on? At? I don't know that uh, that label. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, this is a Beaujolais Blanc Chardonnay. Beaujolais Blanc, so Chard? Yeah, Chard, yeah, I did say Chardonnay. We did. Yeah, um, yeah right. Famille Hoppenot, uh, white burgundy made by Happenstance. I don't know of anything about, I think this is probably all stainless. It doesn't feel like there's so much oak in there. No, it doesn't at all. taste like much oak at all. Um, it was a 46 bucks for white Beaujolais. Don't really get that too much. That's, that's kind of cool. Um, but honestly, I, I don't particularly find this as a, a massively appealing wine. And At the price point that it is, it doesn't really stand out as one of the ones that like you've got to get your hands on. Fine, like you wouldn't be upset drinking it if someone poured it for you, but it's not something so, that... You know, I said that there must be, you know, because you can taste that wine, you just know that's that sort of midweek drinker. There's not yeah. a lot of complexity there. We all sort of agree that... And that with with wine like this, there's always some kind of context. Yeah. You know, why would it be that? And it's actually um, they, they've mentioned this in in the notes here. I find it really fascinating. So this is a complete one-off by Gregoire Hoppeno. There's no future example. This is the only time you will be able to find it. Was well, a, that's cool. It was offered to him uh, by a particular grower in the Macon um, to just make uh, for this particular vintage, but there's no plans to redo it. Yeah. So that's sort of one-off. One one yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rarity. That's kind of nice. Right. Yeah, that's some pretty nice. Hop and O fan, maybe. Yeah. There's pretty fucking trash looking sneakers out there that sell for a lot of money and exclusivity comes into that. So yeah, it's cool wine, but like I don't think it's worth the money. One of those things is like, if, you, if you're in Beaujolais, if you're in France, it probably costs you like 20 bucks. And it's like, fuck yeah, it's a no brainer. Yeah, yeah excellent. Excellent. I did like the yeah. next one more. I liked the next one more too. That was pretty cool. I, 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 is that, there was the one that didn't hit the does for me, otherwise it would have been a clean sweep. Um, I had yeah. $30 on it and I wanted nine of them. I was more about it. It was my favorite of the whites that we did. I called this good but not suitable for further aging. Good but not suitable <laughs> for further aging. Like many right. sitcoms in the 90s. Uh, so, how much is that one gonna cost us? 35. Yeah, good, yeah, that's good. That's cool. probably about yeah. what you wanna spend. I'm happy yeah. with that. Can we off Yano, please? Yano, it's Blanc. Blanc. Ah, good. Yes. You know it's gonna be it's Grenache Blanc. Blanc. Fucking Grenache Blanc, isn't it? Chardonnay Jacquel. Pinot Green. Pinot Green. I said Pinot Green. Jacquard. Take it. Uh, Jac Jacquard. Jacquard. Sa native Savoy yeah. grape. So this is Savoy. 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 Sorry. Thank you. Savoy. Um, um, tractor. Right here. Yeah. Dope. Farmer wine. I really love it. Ask me about my mate who likes tractors. I'll tell you a joke one day. It's fantastic. <laughs> that might be a special really, video that we put really out. Really 15 really minute long telling you one joke. If ask, you see yes. Henry in person, never ask me about the tractor joke. Don't. Uh, ask <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two things to not ask about, Grenache Blanc and tractors. But honestly, uh, for 35 bucks, cool little wine uh, for a Savoy blend, like, I mean, it's not yeah. bad. And wrapping up with a uh, skin contacty little number, wine number six, bit of an orange sick. boy. This was dope. I love this. Sick. This was cool. This. this is really cool. This is, this is uh, got Botrytis, uh, and which is really interesting to see Botrytis in a dry style wine. Um, I had it at the magic $38 number. I, I called this very good and suitable for further aging. I said 60 bucks and 12. Oh, fuck yeah, cracking. cool. I only wanted six of them, but how much did it cost, Luck? 52, there that's you good go. Spot. I so reckon that's right, square. right in the slot. That's really cool. That's a really cool one. Like oh this. What the fuck like this? No idea. Uh, oh my god. Petit Mansang. Yeah, Grand cool. Mansang, Petit Mansang, Corbu. From your own song. Oh my god. Yeah, Holy yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah. Fuck, that is crazy. Yeah, that's any really of those cool. words, man. Um, yeah, so Jura, we haven't, I haven't seen a Jurin song in a long time. I don't think I've seen one ever. <laughs> well, fuck, that's awesome. You might be familiar with Alpha Box and Dice has uh, the Golden Mullet Fury. That yeah, of course. always based on Petit Mancine, this, this particular variety. Yeah. Um, so it lends itself very well to that sort of style of um, uh, skin contact. I love this one. I think that is. That's. That's the coolest wine we've tried in a um, long time. I, that, that is just so, you would, you'd see this and you'd never buy it. You'd see it as like kind of pretty, yeah. the neutral label, pretty straightforward. Yeah, cool. You, you read it, where's it from? Duron Son, it's got a, a blend of three different varieties. Yeah, probably wouldn't buy it. You'd but actually then you'd think taste it this. You'd think yeah. it would, yeah. yeah that's yeah. what's coming out of it. And then you taste it and you go, holy fuck, 
shit, that's awesome. This this lineup was very much so like the gold medals going here, silver medal around here, a bronze sitting over here. But I feel like it's an Olympic silver as opposed to a Commonwealth Games silver, so it actually means a lot more. Like, you know, yeah. you're actually competing against the Americans in yeah, this one. Got, so the fact that you've got, you got second, you got Usain Bolt, and you got Blake here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like as still really to, good. As opposed to whoever won the gold and whoever won the silver at the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much for joining us. As always, guys, please like and subscribe, and please, we'll see you next please. week. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> Bye.